is thinking on the wine that he's going to be producing, he should be thinking immediately with what type of food he's going to be pairing that wine. And that is probably one of the key aspects to understand wines. Since you have all three bottles in front of you, what I would love to do is talk about taste profile. Mm -hmm. And because we have a lot of foodies paying attention today, what kind of foods would be great to pair with each one? Before I go into the specifics of the wine, mm -hmm. um, particularly to all the foodies, I am one of those. Let me tell you that anytime that a winemaker that is going to be, quote unquote, the winery chef is thinking on the wine that he's going to be producing, he should be thinking immediately with what type of food he's going to be pairing that wine. And that is probably one of the key aspects to understand wines. And this is going to be at the same time an invitation to all our viewers, foodies or not foodies, to break taboos. And what, I, and what I mean by this is that probably our grandparents and eventually our parents were of the idea that whites are for seafood and shellfish and reds are for meats and game. And why? Why? Break taboos. Play with this. This is, an, this is a life element that we need to challenge to see how it performs with different types of foods and different types of elements. And, and also one of the other big differences that I find in Chile, comparing, for instance, with the U.S., in Chile, wine is part of the diet. So for us, any meal, lunch or dinner, could not exist without a glass of wine to go with the, whatever type of food we're going to be having. So that is also a, a huge difference, being part of the diet and not just looking at wine and approaching wine as a special occasion product that we're going to be consuming, okay? Having said that, I have in front of me three of the most popular wines in our portfolio. Sauvignon Blanc, that is our Santa Emma Select Terroir Sauvignon Blanc. So Chile, in terms of whites, produces Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Semillon, Bionier, different type of white varieties. Chenin Blanc, Pinot Grigio, that is extremely popular, but Sauvignon Blanc is the queen of the whites. And Chile has a very strong reputation for Sauvignon Blanc. So one of the things that you need to be uh, aware of is that stylistically, what we try to accomplish here is not the super grassy, grapefruity, very exuberant nose that you will find in Sauvignon Blancs coming from New Zealand. Sometimes you're going to find that in Chile, but the style of wines in Chile in general is more geared towards France, the old world. So this is going to be like a crossover between New Zealand and Sancerre. You're going to have more minerality, you're going to have a little bit more complexity and not that you're going to open this bottle and you're going to have that very exuberant nose that is going to be extremely intriguing. Uh, no, it's a little bit more tame. It has a very nice, refreshing acidity. It has a very crispy style with very interesting um, citrusy notes to it, uh, making it a very good wine to enjoy at the end of the day just because you have you want to hit a glass of wine at the end of the day or to be paired with food. What type of food? In my world, I will do ceviche all day long. If not, I will go maybe with some oysters. I will go maybe with a delicate white uh, uh, white fish, like uh, could be a flounder, could be cod, for instance, something not too elaborated, something not too much uh, abusing on dairy products, cream or butter. Uh, the more simple, the better. Okay. Back to Selector Bar Sauvignon Blanc. In my world, my Monday through Thursday wine. Okay. Okay. 
Moving on, I have Cabernet Sauvignon from Maipo Valley, and I have Merlot from Maipo Valley. I'm going to leave Merlot to the end, although in tasting order, most probably we're going to do first Merlot and then Cabernet Sauvignon, but I'm going to explain the reasons why I'm leaving this Merlot to be the last one. Cabernet Sauvignon from the Maipo Valley, and as I said before, in terms of the fruit, a combination of fruit coming from the central part of the valley and fruit coming from our vineyards in the foothills of the Andes, just to give a little bit of the extra kick, extra structure, a little bit more of a backbone, if we can say, to the wine. A Cabernet Sauvignon by the book, meaning a very honest, true uh, expression of the variety, we use a combination of French and American oak barrels. We want a little bit of the expression of both types of wood. American, most of the time, is going to be more chocolate, more vanilla, more of the quote-unquote sweet tastes that you will find in wine. French is going to give you more the leather, the tobacco, a little bit more of the complexity. And that is the reason why we use a combination of both type of oak, American oak barrels and French oak barrels, but not to abuse in terms of oak. So we keep a percentage of the wine in American, percentage of the wine in French, normally six to eight months, sometimes up to 10 months. And then we blend it all together and we put it back in the bottle just to keep a good expression of fruit. Cabernet Sauvignon, red meats, strong cheeses, it works extremely well. Um, so if if you guys like uh, grilling, barbecuing, big time, a perfect match to go with anything that you're going to be grilling, barbecuing, but please leave the barbecue sauce in the pantry or the refrigerator because the sweetness of the barbecue sauce is going to kill most of the wines that are going to be pairing with it. So for this, uh, I don't know how pe when people are going to be watching this, but this is being this conversation is happening uh, very close to our uh, Memorial Day weekend, and therefore I know that this is kind of the unofficial start of summer here in the U.S. And therefore we're going to be grilling, and eventually we're going to be doing a lot of ribs. Well, if you want ribs with barbecue sauce, fantastic and drink wines that are going to be suited for that, that is going to be challenging, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, yeah, try to keep your meats as clean as possible in terms of any uh, super hot, spicy um, additions or the, the sweetness of barbecue sauce. So that will be the Cabernet Sauvignon. And Love last, it. I'm going to be talking about Merlot. Merlot that for those of us that are of a certain age and app was totally destroyed a couple of years ago by a movie in uh, that was very popular called Sideways that the two friends were talking outside of the restaurant saying that if they were drinking Merlot, they were not to walk in. But of course, the producers of that movie didn't know that the bottle that they had sitting on the table was based on Merlot. But anyway, that is part of the French paradox eventually. But Merlot has been for many, many years a very popular variety and uh, it's coming back and, and, and growing again in terms of popularity. Uh, and it's interesting because most of the super high-end French wines, the majority of them have some Merlot in those blends. And therefore, probably most of us drink Merlot and we have no clue that we're drinking Merlot because the, the French uh, wines are labeled uh, indicating the region, the appellation, and not necessarily the varieties that are involved in that particular bottle. Santa Emma uh, has been working with Merlot for many, many years to the point that our reserve of Merlot is one of our flagships in the portfolio. Santa Emma is known for this bottle of wine, the Santa Emma Reserve Merlot. And um, it is a very particular wine because what we do here is that we use American oak barrels that are produced by a cooper in Missouri specifically for this wine with specs that are determined just for this wine. What is the secret is that these barrels are toasted inside at a certain level of temperature that is going to 
allow a caramelization of the wood that is going to be transferred ultimately into the wine via very distinctive notes of vanilla, roasted coconut, and Ooh. sometimes nuances of chocolate to the point that in certain markets, this wine is referred to as the cookies and cream wine or the chocolate kiss wine. So just because of that, it's a very interesting bottle to explore and to renew your vows with Merlot. I like that. Ooh. Food pairing. Um, we have a very strong influence of Italian dishes here. So say a lasagna, say a chicken parmesan uh, will go extremely well with this. If you want to venture a little bit further, I will strongly recommend to pair this wine with a, um, a Mexican dish with mole sauce, not too spicy mole, not too much in the heat side of mole, but more in the, in the profile taste of mole. And if you really want to throw a curveball to this Merlot, try to venture and pair it with tiramisu and see what happens. For those of us ready to go out and shop today, where can we find these wines? What's the website and how can we follow you on social media? Okay. So um, if you want to know a little bit more about Santa Emma, www.santaema1m.cl for Chile. C as in Charlie, L as in Luis. So santaema.cl. That's to find out a little bit more about the winery. If you want to follow us in social media, Instagram and Facebook, SantaEmmaWines.com. That will be the handles for Facebook and Instagram. And then in terms of buying, depending on where the viewers are, because you know that each state has their own different rules. So as I normally say, we don't deal with one country, we deal with 50 within one. But anyway, the easiest way go to wine.com and see what is available in your region, in your area for Santa Emma. Okay, so wine.com will be the easiest way, if it is legal, again, in your state or in your region, so that they can deliver to your door. If not, if you are in places where Costco is available and you guys are a Costco member, sometimes we do run uh, programs with Costco, cycles with Costco, and most of the time it's going to be either the Reserva Cabernet Sauvignon or the Reserva Merlot, okay? And you know the deal with Costco, so you're going to have amazing wines at amazing prices. <laughs>